Welcome to Transitions. I'm your host, Antoinette Zelotti. Today I have with me a very interesting guest. I regard her, Marie Christian, as a success story because she transitioned in and out of the care system and she is now the director of an organization called Voices. We'll hear from you, Marie. Uh, thank you for coming on the show. Thank you for having me. Oh, you're very welcome. So can you tell us a little bit about your um, entry into the system as a, a, a child? Yeah. Sure. Um, I came into care as a young person or as a child. I don't remember specifically what age, just yeah. before the age of 10. Mm -hmm. um, my siblings and I, there were six of us in total, and we were all put into different foster homes. Um, Actually, for the first night or so, my my older sister and my younger sister, we were put into the same home, but then we were separated and put into different homes. And I stayed in this foster home uh, with this little family, uh, a grandma and a grandpa. And I just found it so peaceful. It was very different from my home environment. Uh, there were no other kids, just this old couple. Every once in a while, their daughter and her kids would come over, but on the whole, just the attention was was on me. So it was a big change, and um, it was a good experience. They were very good people, very yeah. kind, um, mm -hmm. very disciplined, but not in a cruel way. They had a little jar of candy that if I had a good day at school, I could come home, take a piece of candy, and, and go about watching my TV shows. Um, I remember I got in a, in a fight with their granddaughter and I kicked her. So for a whole day, I couldn't watch my cartoons. And it was heartbreaking. So they were, very, they were very fair and very kind and they were good foster parents. That's very good. Mm -hmm. Did you stay with them long or did you move to another foster home after that? I stayed with them, I feel like it was for a year. I'd have to go back and, mm -hmm. and access my file to see what the actual dates were. But I believe I was there at least for a whole school year. Mm -hmm. And um, and then we were returned to our mother. All of us siblings came home at the same time. Mm -hmm. So um, did you find that um, there was uh, any contact with other members of your family at that point? You know, now that you mention it, I don't remember too many visits. Um, I know nowadays we really encourage, especially siblings, to stay connected mm -hmm. and to have family visits. But I don't believe we had any visits at that time. Mm -hmm. And um, your extended relatives beyond your parents and the kids, uh, did you have contact with them, like your aunts, uncles, cousins? No. No, no contact there, right? Eh? No, and now that I think about that, that's very strange, but yeah, no, there was no contact with my biological family I, while I was in care. I see, I see. Mm -hmm. And so you were turning more towards your um, friends sometimes then for that, because oftentimes when people, I know when people move to big cities, uh, they uh, can form a kind of a surrogate family around them of friends. Mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. Did you find that there were some friends that were meeting that need or? Well, this foster family I felt um, was very much that they met all of those needs. They had their own traditions and ways of doing things that were completely new to me. So. Um, it was the first time I was introduced to brownies or going to community centers for little community dances. Um, and like I mentioned, their granddaughter uh, mm -hmm. took me in as a sister, so mm -hmm. we did a lot of playing together. So everything, um, although I didn't have contact with my own biological family while mm -hmm. I lived with that family, um, I didn't feel alone or lonely. Yeah. So that sounds like the transition for you then was um, a smooth transition, mostly because uh, the couple that you were staying with just created that real welcoming, and but yet with some structure for you mm -hmm. and very gentle approach. But when you were back home, you're saying that there weren't any sort of contact with extended relatives. 
when well, you were back home? Oh, no, I'm sorry. When you were back home then? Back home. Oh, okay. <clears throat> yeah. Excuse me. Back home, um, it was life as usual. So uh -huh. I'm sure we connected with uh, different members of our family. Uh -huh. In fact, it was a few years after that that my mother passed away. Oh, so then we were... Sorry to hear. Oh, that's yeah. okay. So our siblings were separated again, <laughs> and I was sent to live with my older sister, we went to live with our grandfather. Yeah. So we had a kind of kinship care arrangement uh, mm -hmm. where we lived with him and he did his best, an old Jamaican man taking care of two young people, two young women. So mm -hmm. um, extended family, we certainly saw more of at that time. And we had our church family and friends at school. So we definitely created a community of people around us that shared our interests and kept us in a positive space. Yes. Mm -hmm. So you had mentioned uh, there were six of you before, then you just mentioned the two. So were the other four grown by that time and no. on their own? Or no. did they go to live with other people? Different places. Different yeah. places. So when you were with your granddad uh, and your sister, um, usually the system makes some arrangements to make sure that you're looked after your clothing and other expenses and stuff like that right so they set up sort of like a contract placement with your granddad then uh, he became like your foster right. parent right. right he he became our our caregiver. guardian right our, our guardian. guardian oh i see and okay. he um he he did his best to mm -hmm. to meet our needs mm -hmm. and to yeah and just to provide a safe place mm-hmm mm -hmm. That's excellent. And you went to um, junior high and high school, and then now you're taking some courses at university. You're yes. working on which degree? Social work. On your social work degree. Yes. That's wonderful. Yeah. Yeah, that's my, my discipline, too. Oh, wow. It's, yeah, social work. So um, what I wanted to do then is... Um, I wanted to, for you to, to, to tell us just, was there anything really funny that happened, say, at school or um, even at home that sure. really always, when you think back to it, you yeah. kind of smile? Yeah. I have a few favorite stories, and mm -hmm. <clears throat> I, I was in and out of care a few times in different placements, but back at that one um, foster home, that I lived in for the mm -hmm. whole school year. Mm -hmm. The foster mom was, like I said, a wonderful little old lady. Um, I think she was either Ukrainian or some European, and my hair was impossible for her. Oh. Every day she would go out and she'd buy clips or headbands oh. or elastics, and she would try to push it all together and everything would break. And I would try to um, hide it from her by putting the clips and the everything behind the door. I didn't want her to feel bad for trying, but she just could not figure out how to contain my hair. Oh, so. I see. <laughs> so um, that, it, that was uh, kind of like a little funny part for you, eh? Now, if you were as old as me, then <laughs> you would have maybe gone with the afro back yeah. in the <laughs> 70s, but you're a lot younger than I, mm -hmm. yeah, a lot younger than I am, so. Um, I think that styles change and people try to do mm -hmm. certain styles and what have you. So that's really good. That's funny. And um, looking back then, would you do anything differently? Because I have a friend who said that when she was a child, she was just terrible. She said she put her foster, then adoptive parents mm -hmm. through a hard time. So how about you? Do you do you have anything that you think you would have or or ha, do you have any contact with the, with the, foster, the foster family? family? No, um, not with any of them. I think if I could go back, I would have asked more to have my siblings stay with us or at least to to see them mm -hmm. more. Mm -hmm. um, when we when we first came into care, we stayed mm -hmm. in the same old couple's house and then we were split up and um, and at the time I thought you know finally I get some space to myself but when we all came back home and I heard the the situations that my sisters were living in and the abuse that they encountered in their foster homes 
I wish that I had argued for them to stay with us because my foster home, like I said, they were old, kind, Aww. friendly people, Aww. whereas my sisters didn't have the same experience. So. And it sounds like the communication wasn't there across the kids too to, right. to compare. So right. um, it's good that the system maybe is changing now so that they can have a little bit more communication. Uh, communication. And now I understand that your retreat is certainly a way that some kids kind of can get together and find out more about how each other are doing and share stories. So can you tell us uh, before we, we cut to the video, because I'd like to share that with our viewers, can you tell us a little bit about uh, the retreat that Voices offer with you being the director of Voices? Um, it would be great to hear from you about that. Sure. Yeah. So uh, it started out as once a year. Now we do a spring and a fall retreat where young people who are in and from care across Manitoba are invited to come spend the mm -hmm. weekend with us out at Camp Arness. We go out usually Friday, Saturday, Sunday and we spend the weekend learning mm -hmm. more about um, topics that are of interest to youth in and from mm -hmm. care, mm -hmm. um, rights, advocacy, uh, siblings, um, really anything, life after care, life while you're in care. Mm -hmm. And in mixed in with all that learning, we try to just have a good time, try to keep things really silly and give kids a chance to just relax. Um, to get to know one another, to build a family of choice, we, we call it. Um, like you were saying earlier, when you're in a new and strange place, needing to pull people around you who help you feel like you can be your best. So we just try to create a safe environment where kids can come and feel welcome. Well, that's um, really a good thing. And I think that we'll cut to uh, the retreat right now so that our viewers can uh, have a, a look at some of the really good times that uh, the kids have there. Hi, my name is Marie Christian. I'm the program director of Voices Manitoba's Youth and Care Network. I am also an alumni of CARE. That means when I was a kid, I lived in a foster home, a few foster homes, and I spent um, age 10 to adulthood in kinship care. I was taken care of with my grandpa. So Voices is Manitoba's Youth and Care Network. It's a network of young people ages 12 to 30 who are either in care or they were in care at some point in their life. And our entire existence is to make sure that young people who've been in care know that they're not alone. Uh, we want to create a sense of belonging and a sense of community. We talk a lot about family of choice. It's just want people to feel um, not isolated or alone. We have um, three guiding principles, engage, equip, and empower. We start with engaging youth, um, inviting them to come out to anything we have going on, equip them with tools or opportunities, resources, trainings, um, whatever we've got to help them feel stronger and more confident. And then once they're feeling strong and, and confident, we say, you've got the power to do whatever it is you want to do. So young people share their story with government, with agencies, with one another to help create a better system of care. One of our programs is the Voices Network Retreat. It's where we get together for a weekend out at uh, Camp Arness or any campground, although we've only gone to Camp Arness. We've had our retreat at Camp Arness since we started having retreats, I think, back in 2005 or 2007, somewhere in there. And although we have our retreat at the same time every year, the weather is always very different. So the first year we had our retreat in October, there was already snow, the water was already frozen into little peaks, and the activities we did were mostly inside. 
but now that we go in the spring and a little bit earlier in October, we're able to do more of the outdoor things that Camp Arnest offers. So we've done zip lining, the high ropes, the trail rides, the hay ride, bonfires at night. Uh, we go in their pool, we spend time outside, uh, just having a good time, getting to know each other and a lot of relationship building. We've had a cultural leader out with us the last few retreats, Todd. He has been incredible at taking young people out early in the morning to enjoy the sunrise and to have ceremony at that time. There's just a lot of great outdoor activities that Camp Ornest allows us to enjoy. We do a little bit of conversation about rights, about advocacy, or whatever issues are really important to youth and care. That they've joined a network of people who understand what it's like to be in care and who get it. Everyone there knows what it's like to be in care. And um, we're just here for one another. So that's Voices and that's the retreat that we have twice a year. just watched a delightful video. I really like it a lot and um, we're back to Marie to tell us a little bit more about uh, the making of the video as well as about the retreat and uh, voices. And then we hopefully will have some time to talk just briefly about what's really good in the system uh, that cares for our children and what kind of things maybe could be changed. Sure. Well, first, yeah, that video is great. It was made by one of our participants. His name is Ben, and he brought his camera along with him to the retreat last mm -hmm. September, and he just had a great time um, meeting all these other young people and hearing their stories, and he wanted to capture that and encourage other young people from CARE to come out and participate. Um, so he did a really great job and it was nice to to see the end product and just mm -hmm. to see how much care and concern he had for um, for just presenting the network in a really nice way so what number um, would kids need to call if they're interested in being in the retreat um, yes yeah, anyone um, who's in or from care from age 12 to age 30 is welcome to participate in voices activities they can call the network at 204-982-4956 or toll free in manitoba 1-866-982-4956 um, they can visit our website www.voices.mb.ca or they can find us on Facebook or on Twitter or all the usual social media stuff. <laughs> so um, we're, we're online yeah. and easy to find. So as, as the director of the, um, this agency, Voices, you have responsibility for, you were saying before, three staff or is two staff and yourself? Uh, there's three staff, so uh -huh. actually we're in the process of hiring. Uh, two of our staff uh, decided to continue on with their post-secondary studies, so we're really happy for them. So we're in the process of hiring a new youth outreach worker and <laughs> a new part-time administrative person. Um, Jaina is our uh, program coordinator, <laughs> and so she's taking over planning the retreats and working with our leadership team to, to make sure that the network stays youth driven. That's very, very good. Mm -hmm. I really like um, w the work that you're doing. And uh, volunteers, do you have volunteers as well? Yeah, we have a lot of volunteers and thankfully as some of our members grow up and they, um, they just decide to come back as volunteers and as role models and mentors. So we have a few alumni coming with us next month to our retreat to be adult supports um, and a few other alumni of CARE who just come out to help with programs. One of our alumni uh, facilitates 
our art workshop. Another one um, created a sports program. So a lot of our, men, our members, as they grow up, turn back to, to help some of the younger kids in care. That's really good, really good. I, I think that um, we need programs like Voices in the community. And there are some other things that are happening in the system that are good for kids in care and to help them transition in and out because not all of them stay in care until age 18. Right. Some are back. Um, can you mention a couple of things that, other than voices, because we, we've established that, it's a very good program. Um, can you think of a couple of things that are happening right now that you really would like to see continued? Well, I know at a practice level, there is more attention being given to planned and thoughtful placements for kids who are in care. Transitions can happen so abruptly. Uh, in fact, a few years ago, our leadership team had a garbage bag fashion show because they wanted to raise awareness of the fact that kids are still being moved abruptly with their things in garbage bags. And they said, that's just not the way you treat anyone. And kids in care deserve to be treated with dignity as well. So there is a lot more attention being given to involving kids in their plan of care mm -hmm. and giving them time to prepare to transition to a new placement or return home to their biological family. Mm -hmm. As far as transitioning completely out of care, there are more extensions of care being granted to kids. And I just read a tweet earlier this week mm -hmm. that the NDP are supporting um, kids who want to see extensions um, raised to age 25. So rather than turning 18 and finding yourself on your own, oh. um, just being able to access more support and resources right up until age 25. I see, mm -hmm. I see. So that would be certainly a move in the right direction for some of the kids who uh, do need that support into the post-secondary part right. of their education too, mm -hmm. because uh, school, high school ends at about age 18 for a lot of kids, right. but then uh, during post-secondary, they still need uh, some support. And for a lot of kids who've been in care, especially for most of their lives, mm -hmm. there have been so many transitions that they aren't necessarily finishing grade 12 at 18. Mm. So if they need to finish grade 12 at 19 or 20, this still gives them some time to go to college or go to university, um, mm. or even just take a break and figure out what does life mean now mm -hmm. that I'm an adult? Mm -hmm. What am I doing next? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's, that's a very interesting point because a lot of people don't think about that. They, they think about that chronological age, but mm -hmm. yeah, you have to look at what the experiences have been over the duration. Right. Yeah. yeah. And culturally too, you think that maybe some cultural groups can help with their kids in care because uh, recently I, I met some kids who were being looked after um, by a, a foster mom who is black and um, the kids had a really great experience being part of a program that we had developed. So do you, do you see that too? Because I certainly I can feel that like yeah. with the cultural connectedness mm -hmm. to all these really great cultural organizations yes. that we have out there that, that maybe the child welfare system and that um, ethnocultural support system could mm -hmm. maybe converge a little bit mm -hmm. uh, more. It's definitely, well it's a right mm -hmm. under the United Nations Convention on the Rights of the Child for children to be connected to their culture and to be allowed to explore what that means and how it fits them. Um, so whether you're a First Nations child yeah. in care, Métis, Michif, um, Black, Hungarian, mm -hmm. Portuguese, you yeah. should be allowed to explore your culture and where you came from, to, to learn your language if classes are offered, like to, to know who you are. It's mm -hmm. part of your identity. And definitely I've seen um, in our retreats, we invite a cultural advisor to join us. Um, and he's a First Nations man, and he brings out this big drum and his hand drum, and the young people who want to learn more about their culture uh, just are in awe of him, and mm -hmm. they will sit and they will listen, 
and they'll wake up at sunrise to participate in a ceremony, oh, wow. you know, like yeah. he just, yeah. knowing more about their culture and where they come from just gives them a stillness and a little bit more peace on, on in their heart. So any young person that we can connect to their culture and give them that treasure, then we should definitely do that and support those programs. Well, I, I really am very appreciative of the fact that you've been here uh, sharing your thoughts and sharing information about um, voices. And I, I really feel that there's a lot that we as citizens of this uh, province and of this country can do to help support uh, children who are in care. And I would really urge people to visit your uh, website to find out more about the um, Monday to Sunday portion. I mean, we, we focus a little bit on the retreat and showing the video, but there are a lot of other things that voices actually do. And um, so uh, I'd like to thank you for coming in. Thank you for having me. To be a part of uh, Transitions. And I'd like to encourage our viewers to please visit uh, our website. We have some uh, videos that were done before and uh, they're going to be shown again on Shaw, but you can also see them on uh, YouTube. As well, you can uh, visit Voices website and get more information about Voices, including how you can either donate or contribute uh, by way of your volunteer hours because it all adds up and it's all special for our community. So thank you so much for joining us and please join us again on Transitions here at Shaw Channel 9.